morning's message is being real. It's from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 23 to 32. Let me pick it up at verse 23. When he entered the temple, the, when he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you, by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the religious leaders said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Please pray with me. God, this is a very powerful reading of your word. Jesus, you handled this situation masterfully. And Lord, help us to take this situation, what you preached, what you were teaching, what you were doing, and help each of us to apply it in our lives. We ask this in your name. Amen. Title of this week's message, message is being real. The theme is repentance. In the Bible, when you, when you hear change your mind, the Greek word is metanoia. And it literally means to change. It literally means to turn. It literally means like in the great hymn, Amazing Grace. I once was, now I'm. I once was lost, now I'm found. It means a real change. Now when I think of the subject of repentance, there are so many biblical characters we can go to. I think of Judah in, the, in Genesis. Remember Judah is the one who uh, throws Joseph down into the pit and, uh, you know, hey, let's make some money off this. Let's just not kill him. Let's make some money off this. And then that same Judah, later on, he sees what losing Joseph does to his dad. And uh, that same Judah pleads before Joseph, doesn't realize it's Joseph, saying, hey, don't allow anything to happen to this, this other son of my dad. And he pleads with Joseph pleads with the ruler uh, not, to, not to allow. He says, even take my kids. That's repentance. That's change in the Bible. This morning we talked about it. And uh, I'm going to talk about this more in an adult Sunday school. Today we're going to focus on this. But one of the questions I'm going to ask in adult Sunday school is in the Bible, when you think of repentance, when you think of biblical characters, what comes to your mind? Real quick, at the early service, I, I asked in the congregation, and somebody said, when I think repentance, I think of the thief on the cross. You know, the word repentance is not used 
But this thief, he just came to the end of himself. And he said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus said, today you're going to be with me in paradise. <laughs> today, today, in the Bible. And I want to tell you, if ever in the back row you can't hear me, sometimes I just trailed my voice there. If ever you can't hear me, wave your hand and I'll get loud. In the front row, if I'm too loud, wave your hand, I'll get soft. <laughs> Today we see a different side of Jesus. The volume has been turned up in the gospel. The stakes are higher. Jesus Christ is now in Jerusalem. He's about to be questioned by the religious leadership. They don't ask if he has authority, but what kind of authority he has to do these things. What are these things? They're talking about his teaching. Who? By what authority are you doing this teaching? And Jesus cured some people the day before. By what authority are you healing the sick? This is a setup. They want to put Jesus in a bind. If Jesus says, God is my source of authority, they will charge him with blasphemy. If Jesus doesn't say that God is the source of his authority, then Jesus' power is merely mortal, or worse yet, like in another part of the Bible, they said, they'll say it's from the devil, or diabolical in nature. They're trying to discredit Jesus. That's what's going on here. This is a double bind. They're setting Jesus up. Can you think of a couple of other times in the Bible? When they're trying to set Jesus up. They're putting him in the double bind. They're putting him in the corner. They're asking a question that he can't give a right answer to. Can you think of, there's two circumstances in the Bible where that specifically happens. Can you think of them? Anybody? Surely. When they ask him, they should pay taxes to Caesar. Exactly. If he says no, he's in trouble. When he asks, make sure you heard Shirley. When they ask him, should we pay taxes to Caesar? If he says, no, don't pay taxes to Caesar, he's in trouble with Caesar. If, if, if he says, pay taxes to Caesar, if he says, bow down before Caesar, he's in trouble with the religious authorities. But you know what Jesus said. He said, remember this at tax time. Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar and to God the things that are God's. He's on the, he's on the tightrope hundred yards up, and he walks in. The other circumstance. Can you remember that? It's in the Gospel of John. When uh, they challenged him healing on Sunday. That, that actually came up. That came up in the early service too. And yes, absolutely. That, that's a circumstance I was actually thinking about. Remember in the Gospel of John. The woman caught in adultery. What shall we say? Moses says stone her. If he says stone her, he's in trouble with Rome. If he says, ah, let it go, he's in trouble with Moses. You don't want to be in trouble with Moses. But again, Jesus says, whoever is without sin among you, let them cast the first stone. He's on the high wire. And he walks it. You know, when I read this stuff, when I hear this, uh, I, I just hear one message from God. God will make a way. No matter what happens. God will make a way. Praise his name. Here we're in another circumstance. And Jesus handles it in a different way, though. He turns the table. He turns the table. <coughs> On these religious leaders. They, uh, they, you know, and it boomerangs. You know, they, what they, you know, try to do to Jesus, he's rubber, they're glue, but they try to stick on him and instead is going to stick on them. And they demonstrate how poor leaders they really are. They argue among themselves and they take a public opinion poll. They fear the crowd. And they end up discrediting themselves. 
And then Jesus does some cognitive reframing. What that means, that's psychological language, but what that, that means is this. You're looking at it this way. Let's look at it another way. And Jesus tells a parable of two sons. One says, the father says, go out into the field to work. And one says, kid says, I don't feel like it. And then he gets up and he goes. The other son says, yeah, sure, that I'll go. And he never goes. And there's a lesson in this parable. <coughs> And by the way, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are like the first son. And you know, I, I feel sensitive talking about this today, but Jesus talked about it. So I feel he's kind of covered me with his blood. If Jesus can talk about it in the Bible and it's in the lectionary text for today, I can talk about it as well. The tax collectors and the prostitutes they get it. They're the first son. And the religious leaders are like the second son. All lip service, but no real action. There's a lesson in this parable. God wants us to be real with him. The first son is real. The second son is living a pretense. He is a pretender and a poser. You know, I have to confess to you, sometimes men are good at this. John Eldridge in his book, Wild at Heart, talked about men. That men often that were pretenders and were posers. We, uh, uh, you know, we can, I'll, I'll confess to you, if I fall down or if I trip, happens several times a week, the first thing I look and see is if anybody saw me do it. <laughs> you know, I mean, have you figured out I got a problem, you know? I'm not gonna hide that from people. The first thing I would call, has anybody seen me? You know? It's been said, a man can have three arrows in his back. And uh, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> no? I've got three arrows in my back and I need help. <laughs> but, you know, men, we're, you know, we're, you know we, we do that. But the truth will set us free, particularly with God. He wants us to be real with Him and I'm reading in the gospel today that open resistance is better than pretend following. You know, God, you're saying in here that you want me to do this, and God, I'm really having a problem with that. He knows anyway. He knows it anyway, but he loves it when we put it on the table. God wants us to be real with him. Now, buckle your seatbelts. This is the gospel. Jesus point out to, points out today, you can learn a lot from a low life. That fine, middle-class, upstanding citizens, that we can learn a lot from open sinners. From people who uh, have been a problem in life. Tax collectors and prostitutes. That's what Jesus is saying here. These were open sinners in the society. These were the low lives of the dead. And Jesus is saying to us today, you can learn a lot from them, particularly when they connect to the good news and their lives change. Tax collectors and prostitutes are like the first son, the religious leaders are like the second son. The religious leaders have the right answer, but the wrong application in their lives. Jesus says, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. He's saying, you know, Jesus had kind words for everybody in the Bible. He never shook his finger at anybody except one group, religious leaders. That group he shook his finger at and he shook his finger hard. But to everybody else, Come on, let's reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they'll be as white as snow. Come here, let me show you, let me show you a better way. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you do not believe him. But the tax collectors and prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. 
Stay with me. I know it's hard to stay with me when I do this, but this is a quote that's so good. Talk about it more in adult Sunday school. But more than the issue of authority, Jesus is attuned to the dynamics of repentance, a profound change of mind and heart in the direction and way of one's life. Twice he refers to this change. This is Jesus. Once to, once to honor those who are ready to change, verse 29, and the other time to judge those who refuse to change. It is instructive that the least likely tax collectors and harlots are honored above religious leaders in Jesus' clarification of the parable. This is because the only authority that matters to the least likely is the authority with which God is ready to redeem them. It's when you go into the prison and preach the gospel and you've got an audience that's ready to change and ready to hear the word of God. And Jesus is saying, this is a really cool group. And in fact, all of you who think you have all your lives together, you can learn a lot from this group that's reaching out to the one who really can help them. Amen. Here's the message, the real lesson of this. In the kingdom of God, repentance is the critical transaction. Repentance means change, turning. It means, it means God, God loves it when we have second thoughts. God loves it when we have second thoughts. Yeah, I know I thought this, but now I'm thinking this. By the way, a critical transaction in business is what justifies and legitimates what a business does. It says the critical transaction is when you get a membership. Not only when you get the membership, though, when you go in and then you go to the checkout counter, there's a tri critical transaction that takes place. At McDonald's, it's when you go there and you're...